Hello everyone, I'm Alexa. Welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, I make videos about product design, careers in tech, and life, and today's video is going to be a little bit different. We're living in a very strange and interesting time right now. I'm living out here in San Francisco in California in the United States, and so my experience of this pandemic is going to be very different than someone who's living all the way across the world in a different country. And so I wanted to make a video that spoke more to just what's going on right now. You know, someone sent me a question recently and it was, what keeps you positive during this time? And my answer to that question was, I'm getting through this because I know myself really well. And I know that no matter what happens, no matter what challenges thrown at me, that I will use creativity to overcome anything. And that's just me. I have a really good friend, Dushka. Some of you may know her from some of my past videos. Dushka is a writer and her words have resonated with so many people all around the world. She's written seven books and she's got a new one on the way, but she wrote a book last year uh, that I have right here, Love Yourself and Other Insurgent Acts That Recast Everything. It's an excellent book. Dushka also is very active on Instagram and Instagram stories. And so she created an Instagram story post about this topic of loving yourself and really how she, what she was doing to get through this difficult time. And so we hopped on a call and that's what I wanted to share with you today. So uh, without further ado, here's that conversation. Hi. <laughs> how are you doing? Great, how are you? I'm very happy that we're finding a way to stay close through this situation. Yes. So first of all, I wanted to kick things off. Uh, I know you really love mugs in cups and things like that and so do I. <laughs> this is currently my favorite mug. This mug was handmade by a woman called Sam Lee. She's on Instagram. You can find her at Sam Lee Hello. I want to say that this is not a commercial. She is not, I am not getting paid or anything to say this, but this mug is so beautiful. It has the right weight and it has like delicious grooves on the outside. I love this mug. I have so many mason jars in my apartment that I use for drinks or for just storing food. To make matcha. But to make matcha in, exactly. But this mason jar has, it's like, it's called a wide mouth mason. And I'm just so happy with it. I only have one of them, but it's my favorite cup right now. This is what I'm saying. Whenever I use a mug, I never really know what the experience is going to be like. And people are like, why? Why do you love mugs? And it's just like, there's a tactile thing about them. And it's like the rim of it and how it feels. And this, this, is, this is a very, very good mug. I really love it. So today, uh, we have a very specific question that I wanted to go over in regards to answer to a question that you answered on Quora and then was on Instagram. But before we go into that, I wanted to just set the context because someone could be watching this video in the current moment or, you know, months or years from now. I'm going to say, I don't think it's ever been harder to set the context. We are living in a crazy, surreal time. Yeah, exactly. So I guess the first question I want to ask is if you were to describe the current pandemic to someone 20 years from now who isn't even born yet, how would you, what would you tell them? Well, hopefully 20 years from now, this becomes a distant memory and not something recurring. Like hopefully this is something that we have to explain to future generations rather than not. I'll answer your question with a story. Uh, I'm very worried about my mom. My mom lives in Mexico City. Um, I don't know if I'm going to see her again. Um, for a variety of reasons that I don't need to list. Visiting her would present a risk for her. She lives in another country, the border is closed, all, all kinds of complications. And I talked to her on the phone and she's scared and she's worried and we don't know how this is going to um, develop. So we, we're feeling the same thing everyone is feeling. And so she said to me, I, I haven't seen you in so long. I miss you so much. And I said, mom, I, I was there in mid-February. Mid it's barely been two months. And we were stunned because it feels like so much has happened. It feels like I haven't seen her in years. And I said to her, if I had told you at the breakfast table two months ago that this was going to happen, what would you have said? And she was like, I, I just wouldn't have believed you. I, I would have thought you were completely, absolutely out of your mind. And I would have thought the same thing if she had told me this. And what's interesting is that we both are big believers in science and we have heard that this is uh, uh, what, this is going to happen. We yeah. hear scientists saying that a pandemic is a possibility and that there's a risk. And even then, we are just completely stunned by how, what, by what is happening and how it develops every day. We are living in a moment of uh, reckoning yeah. for all of us. Whenever someone says, I can't wait for things to go back to normal, I'm like, what? It, that, that's just not going to happen. Things are not going to back to normal. Things have changed. Um, and we don't know to what extent, and we don't know what that means. 
But also, I, I don't think anything would make me sadder than having things go back to normal. We were not okay. There's a lot of things that, you know, should be different. That we should be more collaborative and more kind. It was time for, for us to, to, you know, contribute to the creation of something where there's less inequality. And my, my hope is that this eventually, you know, with, with all the loss and the tragedy and the suffering, that this eventually... Um, becomes a better a better world. So you got a very interesting question that you posted about on Instagram and I just wanted to start off our conversation with that question. It was, with this self-quarantine now, I feel quite lonely and have no one to talk to. What can I do to feel better? Yeah, so the reason I answered that question, I think that different people are going through different experiences with this pandemic. Something is happening everywhere, but we are not all in, in similar places. So in, in a way, the experience is very different for each one of us. But the reason I answered this question is because it was very similar to my experience. I am sheltering in place alone. I feel like I've written a lot in recent years about how to be alone and the importance of being alone and what that gives you. I mean, I don't mean like isolated from all humanity forever, but just like the dynamic of like, you know, living, living and, and moving through your day alone. And I feel like there's a very big lesson in, um, as you have seen, and I would love to hear your opinion on this, there's a very big lesson in learning how to do that. So I, I, and it's a process and some days it's really painful and other days it's wonderful. And you, uh, you know, are, are, are very extroverted and I know that you live with roommates, but I also know that your dynamic is, you know, you're, you're, you're fending for yourself and that's also, you know, really hard. So I'll tell you more about what I said in my answer, but I would love to hear, you know, what your pandemic experience is like and, you know, the things that you are putting in place for, you know, to get through this. I feel like the purpose of this conversation and why we decided to do it was in the hopes that what we have found works for us might work for someone else. I've incorporated some things into my life, some routines that I'm just so happy about. First being, I love matcha and I used to buy a ton of matcha, like matcha lattes out at cafes and stuff. And I finally, I finally learned how to make my own matcha latte. I actually know this because you've been posting the process on Instagram and I've been following it because it requires this like whisking thing, yes. right? Okay. So I brought it over. Yes. Okay. This is my matcha uh, cup mm -hmm. and this is the matcha whisk. Mm -hmm. It's on this little stand right now to keep it nice and round. But basically- I love it because it's like, there's a ceremony about it. Yes. Yes, yes, exactly. And it's also, I, I bought the matcha from my favorite cafe. So I'm still drinking and drinking their matcha and supporting their business. But basically every, well, every morning when I make it, I heat the water to a certain temperature and I measure out my matcha and then I pour the water in and I, I whisk it and it like comes all foamy and then I have my, my milk and my ice, it's all measured out. And, and then I pour it in. It's just like the best, it's an experience. It's a ceremony. Well, that is actually one of the things that I mentioned in my answer, develop your ceremonies. Yeah. It can be matcha, it can be coffee, it can be, you know, just getting up in the morning and sitting and meditating for a few minutes. Like a, a ceremony is a, is a definite way to, to start loving yourself because it's spending time with yourself and honoring that time. Yeah. So the first one I would say is develop a ceremony and it can be whatever you want. It can be chai. It can be matcha, it can be, it doesn't even have to be something you drink or eat. It can be something, you know, sitting cross-legged somewhere, but there's, there's a ceremony about the way that you start your day. What I want to say is that part of what this process has granted us, all of us, is the ability to explore what activities make us feel better and what activities don't. Right. So I, I find it very useful to make a schedule for myself. And the schedule for, that I make for myself is basically the same every day. And it can be, for example, um, get up, meditate. And I want to say that I, I, I am not like a huge meditator. I'm not one of those people who, who goes, I would love to be, but I'm not one of those people who goes and meditates for three months somewhere. I'm talking about 10 minutes a day, but it is, it completely changes my day. And it also quiets my brain so that I can do creative things. So I, I can't recommend it enough. And there are a lot of places online where you can go and like how to meditate and like follow a certain set of instructions. But basically it is just sitting alone with your, with your breath, like following your breath instead of following your thoughts. Just to go back to the schedule, it is I get up, I meditate, I make myself coffee. And it's also kind of a ceremony because I grind it. I put it in a, in a, in a French press. I serve it in a cup that I love, whatever. I mean, this is one of the cups that I love, but I serve it in a cup and I just sit in my living room, just quietly sipping my coffee and just sort of like gathering myself. It really, really helps me to have a, have a routine. And the, three, the things that I include in the routine are meditation, exercise. Exercise is invaluable. People think that exercise is about getting in shape, but 
it's for the brain. Without exercise, I think I would go absolutely nuts. So for exercise, I do yoga every, every single day, a class with a teacher like on Zoom, um, because it makes all the difference in the world and I feel a little sense of community and I, and I walk. Breathing is, I sort of like, I don't want to conflate it with meditation, but I, but I make a point to like, whenever I feel anxious or, oh my God, this is like making me nervous or whatever, I take a deep, deep breath. It really, really helps. I keep my space very organized. I do a lot of like cleaning activities and organizing activities because it organizes me emotionally. Yeah. Um, you know, organizing my place. I find it really, really important. I have uh, been reading this book. It's yeah. Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, the Mary yeah. Kondo uh, methodology that was yes. really popular about a year ago. So it's about organizing and tidying your space and keeping things around that sparks joy for you. Like it, that's sort of the fundamental thing that she keeps coming back to. And she also teaches how to fold uh, your clothing in a way that... Um, I just, it seems so obvious now that I've read this, but it just things fit better. And also they're just cared for more when you fold them. Mm -hmm. And it's just made a huge difference for me. And as I've been, cause I've been also cleaning and organizing my space because I also think your space is super important. So you know, important. It's just like, it changes your brain. Actually, I love that you said that because what I was going to say next, which is related is never underestimate the importance of beautiful things. And they don't, I don't have anything like expensive or pricey, but I, place a lot of value in seeing beauty around me. And it, can, it can be the cup that you drink with. It, yeah. you know, just like having things that, I, th I find beauty extremely grounding and extremely calming. I think it's very important. And I think that that applies too to or, you know, properly folding what you already have. Sometimes I go out for a walk and I snip a flower, not from a neighbor, but from a large space. And I come in and I put it in a vase and it just, it's just, it makes me happy. And I was telling you before we started this call that um, plants, are, they make me so happy. Plants in your space are fabulous, which is a new discovery for me. I did not have plants even five or six months ago. I just started recently getting them. And now I'm hooked because they make me so happy and they change the space. And so now I have plants everywhere. When I walk, I take pictures. I feel like we have a tendency to try to do many things at once. And I, I'm really exercising doing one thing at a time because it's such a gift with such uncertainty in the future to stay present. And you can't stay present if your brain is scattered everywhere trying to do different things. So instead of walking and looking at my phone, I take pictures to sort of like be fully in the moment. And it really stuns me. All of my Instagram feed, all of it, not all of it, maybe 90% of it is photos that I take on walks very, very close to where I live. And it's just, I can't believe that I've taken so many pictures of such a circumscribed space. And then other things that I do that I think are also like a form of expression of self-love, which is I take very good care of what I eat. I'm super healthy. I discovered that when I'm out and about and life is like happening around me and I go out with friends and whatever, I have less control over what I eat. And here it's easier to not buy something than it is to not eat something once it's in my house. So I'm just careful with what I let into my house. And I want to be super specific that I'm not talking about dieting. Yeah. What I'm talking about is the consumption of healthy food because junk food just makes my brain, it just makes me more anxious. Sugar interferes with your sleep and with your anxiety. I love sugar. I love it. So I have to be very, very careful with like not binging on junk food. The other thing that I have to be super careful with, and I think this is probably quite common, is the news that I consume. There is so much out there and I have to recognize the line between I want to be informed and I'm completely obsessing with everything that's happening in the world. Yeah. And the difference is my sanity or me being absolutely jumping out of my skin. This is super cheesy and I hear it so much and every time I hear it, I roll my eyes, but now I'm going to say it because it's so useful, which is listing things that you're grateful for because gratitude forces your brain to notice the things that you have and anxiety and uncertainty makes you imagine all the things that you won't. So it's a very good antidote to anxiety and just loneliness to just be like, let me just make a list of all the things that I have and all the ways that I'm fortunate. It really puts your head in the right place. Learning new things like your matcha skill. I don't feel like I have the concentration right now with everything that's going on to learn like a new language, but um, I've, I have been learning a lot about how to clean things, like specific things, like how to clean a countertop made of concrete. And it requires a special wax treatment. And I was like, how do you apply this wax treatment? And yeah. so I 
watched a bunch of videos about it. The other thing that helps a lot is connection. So, you know, I'm lucky. I have friends like you that I can like get on a Zoom with and I have just people that I can like have a, you know, drink with or tea with or whatever. But if that's not possible, you can also connect via games just to find a way to let other humans into your life even when you can't see them. You know, the, the difference between social distancing and emotional distancing. Oh, the other thing, and I also think this goes back to your matcha hits on so many points, but the other is like creating something. Yes. One of the things that I've really gotten into that I find so calming is uh, coloring. Amazing. Oh, I love it so much. It, it was so intricate. Let me show you another page. Oh, beautiful. It's so, so the intricate. flower on the top. Oh my yeah. God, I love that. The red and purple. Yes. It's yeah. obviously like, it's, it's like many different shades. So it takes me like one of these takes me, I don't know, like a week. The fact that it's so intricate, like deliberately intricate. Yeah. It's just super, super soothing. Yeah. Oh, I love it so much. I love it. It's this book. Secret Garden. Yeah. So what this, um, what this does, sometimes Zoom is very exhausting to me because it's like a normal social interaction. You move around and you, you know, I'm talking to you, but then I turn and talk to somebody else. But in Zoom, you're, it's very intent yeah. and, and it's kind of exhausting. So sometimes I tell someone, let's Zoom, but I'm going to be coloring. And right. that allows for us to like hang out without, you know, being on the Zoom like, like yeah. owls. Then... Oh, I take a bath instead of a shower. And this is so funny I because I've all, like, I've never liked baths. I'm like, I just get in and get out of the shower super quickly. But the bath is like such a ceremony. Like I put salts in it. Yeah. My, my bathtub, I don't know. I don't remember if you've seen it, but it's very small. And yeah. I use very little water. It doesn't, you don't need like a, you know, it doesn't have to be a swimming pool or anything. I, I don't like wasting water, which is part of the reason why I didn't do baths before. But now I just find it really relaxing. And I just sit there and like, take deep breaths and like smell the salts and it does seem like there's a theme it's the ceremony and appreciating the things that you bring into your life and the routines absolutely yeah. it's it's being more um, mindful of what you're bringing into your life and then the last one and i i want to ask you what yours are aside from the matcha because i know that you're in a different circumstance than mine but the last one is i i am very very careful about all of the things i need to do to sleep well if i'm sleeping well or not sleeping well, it changes everything. You have no idea how many times I've been anxious, depressed, I've been lost, I've been uh, in despair, and I'm like, oh my God, I just needed to sleep. I think we underestimate the importance of sleep, and I think that it requires a lot. It requires for you to wind down, for you to turn off your devices, for you to you know, consider the part where, of the, your place where you sleep you know, separate, but anything that you can do to, to sleep better, it changes everything. So that was my answer to the question on Cora. And I would love to hear what you are doing and what you have discovered. Because yeah. your situation is different. The first is you're living with roommates, which I think is its own kind of difficulty. Yeah. Because you're navigating your space within other people, which for me would be incredibly draining. Like I'm, I, one of the things I'm most thankful for is the fact that I am alone, even though for some people it's what makes it hard. It really suits me. The other thing, Alexa, is that you are managing a long distance relationship. Yeah. And one of the things that you agreed to do was visit each other with a certain regularity. And now you can't do that. So I think that that would be really interesting for people in a similar situation. Yeah. Well, just to go off of the first thing, living with roommates, I think the one of the more challenging things is actually the space in the kitchen because we're all cooking more and it's also like a place to to hang out that there's like, you know, it's a shared space, but there's so many dishes and we only have so much room and like devices to use for cooking. And so one of the things that I have been doing a lot is cooking. I'm like, is, I'm like getting, yeah. I'm like, oh God, no. Yeah. I used to date a guy, I lived with him for seven years and we were super incompatible. But one of the places where our incompatibility like blew up at first was him going, just stay out of the kitchen. Yeah. It was like we just couldn't, we, I just was like, I don't, I just, I just need to get out of the way. It's so hard yeah, to navigate exactly. your space with other people. Yes, exactly. I'm not built for that. Yeah. So that's been probably one of the more challenging things. Although, like I said, it is really nice to have people around and 
um, that that's all been good uh, as far as far as that goes. But yeah, navigating a long distance relationship has been interesting. Um, like you said, we are planning to see each other at least once a month uh, for like for the foreseeable future, so to speak, as much as we could. And that's just not possible anymore. So I don't know. I mean, we talk all the time, like every day, all day, and we FaceTime a lot too, often multiple times a day. And so that has really been nice and I feel so connected still because we're constantly talking and checking in and I know everything that's going on for him and I'm really grateful for the technology that we have because otherwise you know a decade ago it just wouldn't be the same oh oh my gosh absolutely yeah and then actually I think you're gonna love this uh we have become pen pals <gasps> are you writing letters to each other yeah. <laughs> that's amazing and it's so fun so um it's my turn to write the next letter uh and it's it's been great because uh, the mail is still going on as as normal, and all it is is dropping it in a box uh, once a week. Yeah. Writing to each other, writing shows another person a different side of you. Yeah, um, it's it's it's. I find it very, it's very intimate and very revealing. It's a very beautiful thing, and it's fun to also include other little things here and there. Yeah, uh, like last time I uh, did painted a watercolor. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Mike sent me back uh, a guitar pick in this last one. Oh, with, that's fantastic. Uh, really you can press a flower. Oh, I like that. Yes. yes. Press flowers are really, really beautiful because if you press it long enough, it's like papery. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Well, I hope this is helpful for people. I think that, um, you know, doing a routine and like the, the appreciating the ceremony of it and taking it a day at a time and writing letters is as good a way as any to get through this. Yeah, absolutely. And just, yeah, uh, take it day at a time. We don't know what's going on. Uh, life is uncertain. That's just a part of it. So, uh, yeah, I think that's all we can do is just try our best every all day. All we can do. All we can do. Yeah. And, and, and get a good night's sleep. Yes, exactly. It was wonderful to talk to you. So nice. Always. Like always. From afar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love you. Yes. Good seeing you. Bye, honey. Bye.